Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about The Girl Who Leapt Through Time from 2006. And this is my Patreon review raffle winner for May. Sorry, this is a little late. If you would like to enter into the movie review raffle, just pledge $5 or more to my Patreon, which will be in the description below. It's a reward for everyone who pledges $5 or more, and I pick an entry every month. This month, or at least for May, was actually picked by Paleo Steno, who I'm sure you all know if you're watching this channel, but if not, you should check that out. I'm also on his POS podcast. It had really nothing to do with that. I pick them at random and he pledges my Patreon and he picked this film. So that is why I'm reviewing it. So really it can be anyone. I pick them at random. So it doesn't matter. And it could possibly be you and I could pick a movie you would like me to review. This is only the second film I've seen from Amora Hasoda. I'd seen The Boy and the Beast and I wasn't really convinced that he was the next great Japanese animation director that everyone really said he was before. And maybe that's because there's this thing I've felt for a long time that if you don't really see the reason why a certain actor or director or screenwriter or musician or whatever how they really actually broke out and then you see their latest thing that might not be as good and you're kind of like I don't really get it why does everyone think this person is so great I think the girl who leapt through time really made me understand why everyone thinks Mamoru Hosoda is such a great animation director because the girl who left through time is certainly a great delight it's very much a wonderful fun melancholy beautiful animated film somewhat reminds me of Studio Ghibli of course Mamoru Hosoda actually was rejected from concept from directing Howl's Moving Castle and this was the film he made kind of after being rejected or the closest film he made I'm assuming this is the film he made instead of making that film and I actually probably like this film more and I'm kind of glad he did get turned down because I think he got to make a really splendid wonderful time travel movie this kind of checks a bunch of boxes for me personally I love wonderful small character piece animated films particularly if they're animated from Japan and I love time travel movies and the girl who leapt through time has all of that it is a wonderful and really great time travel film in kind of the tradition of things like Edge of Tomorrow and really if we're talking about Edge of Tomorrow we all really mean Groundhog Day that kind of thing where the whole story is almost told through the protagonist everyone else isn't changing that's the nature of the whole concept so of course they're not going to it's not weak screenwriting but the main character in this case Makoto I'm sorry if I screw up everyone's name which I probably will you see how she changes through this time travel and especially works well when you consider that this is a story about a high school girl and high school is really a lot about maturity something the teen movies in America don't really get but it seems the Japanese animated films seem to get it's interesting I think I, I haven't really seen many Japanese films that take place in high schools but I've seen a lot of Japanese animated films that take place in high schools I feel like I kind of understand it but clearly I don't because I'm an ugly American so how would I know but the girl who left through time really has a real wonderful nature to it has a real fun to it you really fall in love with Makoto really early on it really won me over with this I really just got really into it I was really transported to this adventure of watching this girl discover time travel and be able to leap through time to finish tests make sure she gets the last pudding cup from her sister and do all sorts of fun things while also learning a lot about herself makoto who enjoys playing baseball with her friends and lives with her parents and everything's going fine she's a normal high school life and all that stuff until one day she's in the science lab and suddenly she can literally leap through time when i mean that she literally leaps up and then goes back in time so it's fairly literal she's the girl who leapt through time this is what she does it's not a metaphor she discovers she can leap through time and after she has a pretty crappy day leaps through time then suddenly has a really great day because she knows what's coming and does kind of various goofier things it's actually quite funny seeing her leap through time and then fall into things and do karaoke for 10 hours something i think my wife would absolutely love but then that's a really hoarse voice afterwards but then i was like why would you want to do the same hour over and over again because that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me you'd be on like hour eight Eight, and they'd be like why are you playing that song now as you see her grow through it her aunt who she visits at the museum tells her about leaping through time and the costs of it and what to do with it and she goes through it and then starts to learn the cost that has on her friends on the other people at her school and how to use it for both the benefits of her and how she matures and becomes more of an adult as she leaps through time I know Mamoru Hosoda is compared a lot to Studio Ghibli, and I think at face value when you hear another Japanese animated film compared to Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki, you probably go, okay, well that's like a very easy, very mainstream comparison. Could you be a little more creative here? Hell, I understand that completely. But while watching The Girl Who Left Through Time, I thought of Ocean Waves quite frequently, which is kind of like the poor man's only yesterday, but Ocean Waves is still a good movie. I like Ocean Waves a lot, actually. And it is interesting that this film especially gets compared to that 
This is kind of the earliest, I think. This is the second of his four films. This is the film he made after not actually working for them and almost working for them on Howl's Moving Castle. And I particularly like how they use nature in this film, how they use setting, and how this all takes place in July. And that kind of hazy, like you can feel the humidity, you feel like this film takes place in summer. I'm shooting this in summer. I wish I had shot this in July because this movie takes place in July, but it's the Patreon review raffle, so I gotta do it now. But it does have that sense of the summer. It's really interesting when animation doesn't have to use time in terms of seasons. They don't they don't have to if they don't want to. What made this film interesting is that how it really played into that and expose that it almost reminds me of like spectacular spider-man or how Hayao miyazaki and studio ghibli use nature but i think how mora hasoda used this specific period like july in a specific week you didn't just get nature you got the seasons which is actually kind of one of the bigger parts of nature which is surprising they forgot but i'm not saying they're a weak storyteller for doing it it's almost like mora hasoda understood a different element to go into i really love that about that i like the animation style i like how this is a little sketchier it's a little less refined than you'd probably expect from something like this not that it's unrefined it's not sketchy style but it's like the sketchier than refined but still refined especially like that noise like what is that that cricket noise like i heard that growing up that's in like a lot of studio ghibli films i've heard in a lot of anime i'm not exactly sure like, i guess that's in japan since i don't know i'm just gonna assume it is but if it's not i apologize for being racist but i've watched so many studio ghibli films so many times i kind of associate that sound with studio ghibli a lot of this might just be because america is so associates anime with that but i kind of felt like like there was an influence there and there's kind of a connection especially how it handled certain things but it's almost more of a takahata influence i think because so many people just associate miyazaki with ghibli but it's more of the takahata sense because it's more of a character piece and it's kind of like the fantasy more sci-fi element combined with a more of a takahata thing because going through the kind of existential crisis of a teenage girl seems to be something that takahata would be more attracted to than miyazaki this is actually based on a book by yakota Tetsu oh well I'm not gonna pronounce it very well but it's actually based on the book The Girl Who Left Through Time and it's a loose adaptation it's actually been made into a live action movie and a tv show and all sorts of things and this is sort of a loose sequel the character of her aunt is actually the main character in the book I haven't seen a movie that's based on the first book which is kind of interesting that Hosoda chose to make kind of a weirder adaptation I just found that interesting I don't really have much to add on that because I don't know the original story but apparently this is a bigger book in Japan so probably people were interested in that. I really like how it understands how, what is important to a teenager. Also kind of how the various sides of teenage life like she's very goofy like I really like when she'd fall into the past like she'd leap and then she'd be like bah! <laughs> like every time I'd laugh I was like I really like this girl she's like really funny. Anytime she'd go bah! like I was laughing. But you kind of like realize how goofy she is. I think she's probably one of the better female protagonists I've seen in an animated film because you get a real full picture of her. She's really goofy. She's really silly. She's sad. She falls in love. I mean, like, what does this girl not do in this movie? It's, like, amazing. And but those parts where she falls into stuff. I should really make all my sounds on my computer just her when she falls into stuff because that'd be funny. Just when there's errors or something. She really wins you over. And I think that's the kind of key to a Groundhog Day or Edge of Tomorrow or even this film is that you really have to fall in love with this character or you're not going to really want to follow through with this. They're so important. Mamoru Hasoda having all those goofier, sillier things like her keep repeating karaoke so she could do it 10 times or eight times or however many times it's important because you kind of like light heartingly get on her side and then you can follow her through the more dramatic parts of this film it's very flowed very correctly but like as it's lighter and more fun and then it goes into the more dramatic parts it flows very well into itself i did notice that they do the thing that both groundhog day and edge of tomorrow do where there's seemingly time she leaps through time that we just kind of don't know about and it just like takes that for granted when you see like the number she has on her arm and stuff and that changes and you're like wait it wasn't like that many times and the movie just acts like i mean it, there were other times but like we weren't they're not important i think that's kind of funny when they do that you're time traveling so that's weird enough so let's just like have fun with it and do the kind of fantastical elements of it which this film had a lot of fun with it also kind of does the buffy the vampire slayer thing where it uses it kind of as a metaphor for high school and like how if you could go back in high school and the ramifications of that and understanding both how you'd use these fantastical powers 
just a normal person would, but also how that reflects the teenage life, which I think Momora Hasoda did very well. Although he didn't write the film, I think how he portrayed that and animated that really got that through the film. The one thing that was interesting as this film, the flow of it is odd because it did feel like it was almost a little too long, but every scene I'd be like, oh God, this thing is like, keeps going. But every scene I was like, oh, but I like, I like this scene now. Oh, I, I actually like this too. Oh, well maybe they should, oh no, I'm, I'm okay with this. And like that like kept happening to me. It was like really interesting. This does kind of remind me of thing like Whispers of the Heart and Ocean Waves is, or probably Whispers of the Heart that I think this is actually a good film for young girls to see because it's definitely like not just like a perfect protagonist. Makoto's definitely flawed. I guess she's more tomboyish and she hangs out with these two guys and they play baseball and stuff, but it's not your traditional female protagonist. She's not overly girly and feminine and such, but she's also like really funny. She's really captivating. It really shows more of a better representation of a woman than you usually see in any kind of a movie. And I think I'd honestly like to see this film more discussed in that, because I think it portrays that so excellently. This is also probably one of my more favorite films I've seen about high school in a very long time. Because when you're in high school, like some of these events are so monumental. Partly because you like haven't lived much of a life and like crap like that matters a lot more to you. And then when you get to an adult, like your heart shrivels up and dies and nothing means anything. But like when you're younger and when you're in high school, and if you're watching this and you're in high school, you probably know if you break up with a girl or you go through something with a friend, it like, like permeates through your brain like nothing you'd ever felt before. And I think this film captures that really well while still being an excellent time travel movie. I love time travel stories and I think this is probably up there with one of my more favorites. It's definitely a film I'd like to watch again. And it kind of shows me Mora Hosoda really understands character so well. I think that's one of the things about a great, when we talk about great animation directors, it's not just about the technical, it's more about the character. One of the reasons I think why maybe people compare this to Ghibli and why I'm comparing it to Takahata or even and Miyazaki is that those are people who are excellent storytellers and this shows a very excellent storyteller. This makes me excited to see another Mamoru Hosoda film. I do think this is one of the better animated films I've seen of the 2000s and it's a very captivating kind of light one that also kind of sneaks up on you in terms of everything it's trying to say, especially about time travel and how th some things work out for some people and how these characters really mean something. There's a part where like the guy throws it and she's blocked by one of her friends and then it bumps off and hits a girl and I went like oh my god like it like shocked me like what's interesting about this as much as like in Edge of Tomorrow and Groundhog Day you know these people are going to come back and do the same thing and you like they still matter to you as people it's like all of the emotions of what her time travel is doing permeates through it you kind of get to that level you understand that high school mentality and this film like breathes it but it takes it seriously and takes it seriously in a way not to say like oh you dumb kids and your stupid drama but it, like saying like oh this is what's important to you I'm, I'm trying to tell the story from this perspective and I need to take this seriously and that should is like a very mature storyteller to really understand its protagonist and understand what's exactly important to the story. And I think Mamora Hosoda gets that. This is both a great time travel film and a great high school movie because he understood how to tell both those and get them interconnected within that. And this is, to me, like when I was watching, I was like, man, Mamora Hosoda is great. Like, this is a great movie. And it's the film that's made me think like, yes, he could be the next great animation director from coming out of Japan. I don't know if he will be in, you know, the future will hold that if he will become as great as those guys they honestly it doesn't matter don't think about that too much what you should think about is the girl who left through time is an exceptional motion picture it's a fun movie it's a sad movie it's really one of those films that can tell a great story and go through a lot of different emotions and do all that very very well i don't think a lot of people like to have like one tone throughout their film and it's super boring and it's like like whatever i don't know but like this to me is what like almost a very complete film because you laugh i didn't cry but like i guess you could cry you know they fall in love like all these amazing things happen you understand about time travel it's a very dense movie but it doesn't play like that it plays like a nice almost like young adult novel excellently directed to the big screen but it's not a young adult novel or at least to my understanding it's not Mamoru Hosoda really loves the story he's telling and he loves what he's doing with it but he understands the genres he's playing with and it shows a master storyteller just like Miyazaki used various stories various old fables and old fairy tales in his films and played with them and made something new
do just like Momora Hasoda is doing it. Maybe he's doing it a little more directly because he's actually using a book called The Girl Who Left Through Time and making an indirect sequel that's a little different. He's not hiding it as much, but you know, Ponyo is not really hiding The Little Mermaid either, so whatever. He is doing that master storyteller thing where he understands how to use those various stories to tell his story, how to use those genre cliches and genre norms to do an interesting thing with it. And I have no doubt he probably watched Groundhog Day. This is a film that shows a really great director and a really great storyteller, and it makes you feel like they have all the promise that everyone's hyped them up to be. But also, I think this is a really great, wonderful little movie, and it makes me kind of leap at joy at what I experienced and feel like I really saw a really great animated movie. And it actually kind of makes me want to leap through time and watch it all over again. So if you have seen The Girl Who Leapt Through Time and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And if you would like to enter a movie into the movie review raffle, then check out my Patreon in the description below and pledge five or more dollars and maybe you will be the winner next month. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.